Now, in this lecture, we'll see how to use Google Cloud Storage to not only store and retrieve files, but also how to use it in conjunction with Cloud Google VM. So first steps uh, is, as always, log into your console, go to cloud.google.com, make sure the correct user is selected here. If not, choose the appropriate user from the list of users here. If you have more than one Google account, click on go to console. So I'm getting an info that access is forbidden because it's trying to go to a closed uh, project, but that's okay. Click on okay if you get something like this. Okay, now let's create a new project. So let's give a project name as cloud storage. Click on create. Now let's go into the project. Firstly, let's uh, just create the VM. Even though we are going to get to that towards the end, let's create the VM. Uh, we are going to use, we are going to create a Linux VM. If you are unfamiliar as to how to create the Linux VM, please refer to the Linux VM section. But I'm just going to go through the steps. You can just follow along. But if you want more in-depth in -depth details, refer to the earlier lectures on what the Linux VM is and the demo around the Linux VM. So I'm going to just search for Compute Engine. It's already there. I've used it. So I'm going to use the drop down here to choose Compute Engine. And I'm going to enable the API. So this might take a minute or two. So wait for it to be completed. Okay, so the API has been enabled. So now we can create an instance. So I'm going to breeze through these steps. So click on create instance. I'm leaving everything as it is. I'm just changing the VM to Ubuntu. And I'm going to use Ubuntu 20.04. and allow HTTP traffic so that we can connect to it via SSH and click create. Okay, so while this is getting created, let's go ahead, let's go to cloud storage, search for cloud storage and let's go to cloud storage. Now, the whole concept of cloud storage is to use something called buckets. So buckets can be thought of like, let's say a different location or a hard drive. So let's click on create bucket. Let me close this. If you want details, you can go into that. So you have to pick a unique global name. So obviously you have to do a bit of experimentation. So if I just simply say, test bucket that's probably not going to be available so i have to probably give some characters and numbers at the end just to make it unique click on continue let's leave everything in default but just to go through some options so you can have it in multi-region which is the highest availability and dual region is two regions as you can see, it's high availability and low latency across two regions. And you can also choose a specific region, which means that it's lowest latency within a single region. But if it's accessed from another region, it will obviously be slower. So I'm just going to use multiple regions in the United States. I could also use multiple regions in EU or Asia, depending on your location. I'm going to leave it as it is. So let's click on continue. Now, there are various storage classes that we saw in the earlier lecture. So you have standard, nearline, cold, and archive. So if you're storing something for archival, it is archive, but you can't access it instantly. So it's a trade-off between how quickly you want to access the data versus uh, the cost. So the quicker it is, the more expensive. Again, when I say expensive, it's relative. 
all these storage classes are very very cheap as compared to even a hard disk so so you can always check what each of these by hovering over here or clicking on learn more to go to the help section so we'll leave it at standard let's continue so choose how to control access to objects so let's leave it at uniform for now but we'll also see what fine grain is in a second once we have created this uh, bucket and advanced settings we'll just leave it as it is so currently it is automatically encrypted at rest uh, by google manage encryption key but you can also use your own uh, key management system as well and you can also set a retention policy if you want that says that it has to be retained for x number of seconds days months or years and that means that you can't delete or modify once you set a retention policy as you can clearly see your objects must be protected for modification or deletion so maybe there are some regulatory rules that say that something can't be deleted before it's three years or something so you can set that so we'll not do anything and labels will skip but labels are key pair values that let you group related buckets together or with other cl cloud platform resources so we'll leave that at the default and let's click on create okay so now the bucket is created and we are inside the bucket so if you go back outside you'll see that these are your various buckets so you can click into it and go into a bucket now this is just like any storage place you can create a folder for example i can create a folder called test and then you can upload files directly from your pc or you can upload an entire folder or once you click on this you can delete or download the folders as well so these are some of the options and you can also click here and you can see what are the different options that are there so let's go into this and let's just upload a single file so i've just uh, downloaded a image from the internet happy cat so i'm just going to upload this so just double click and it should be uploaded and okay the file has been uploaded successfully now if you click into this you can see details around this file so i'm going to close this for a second here uh, we don't need the tutorial and here you can see some details right so for example authenticated url and if you click on this you can see this okay that's one option the other option is the gsutil uri which is something that we can use to transfer to a vm within the google cloud we'll come to that in a second when we go back to our vm then the other thing is here you can see a preview of the file as well so that's pretty cool there is no public url and it says not applicable and if i try to go into edit permissions it says that you cannot edit permissions because it is controlled at the bucket level the access uh, if you remember we had this fine grained or where the access control is so let's go in and change that no problem so let's go back to our bucket and let's click on it or we don't even need to click on it we can just click here and go to edit bucket permissions and again here there's a bunch of options associated with this bucket and here we can just switch to fine-grained access and click on save now let's go into the bucket let's go into this folder finally let's go into this file and now let's see if we can edit the permissions and you have an option to add an entry and you can say that entity is public and all public can read this so we'll leave it at that and let's click on save 
and now you can see that there's a public URL as well. So you can use this URL from any browser or any, any website, any, anywhere outside Google Cloud. Let me open this in an incognito mode window. And you can see that you can access this through the internet. Now let's try to remove this permission and let's try to delete it and save. There seems to be an issue with Google Cloud. I'm not, I'm not, I've not exactly found out why this is, but it doesn't look like you can make it non-public once it's public. Uh, but no worries, if you ever run into that kind of a situation, you can always go back to the bucket and change the permission and make to uniform. And save. And now if you go into this particular folder and this particular file, you can see that the public URL is no longer available. Okay, one final thing. Let's see how we can transfer this file into a Google Cloud VM that we just created. So let's copy this URL. Go to the Google Cloud platform where we have opened this and we can go to the compute engine you can see all the resources here one storage one compute engine so that way it's easier to keep it all well organized if you if you use projects so let's go into the compute engine let's connect to this via ssh using the open in browser window and now firstly let me show you that there's nothing in this vm if i give a ls on the current working directory, there's, there's nothing there. Now, the command is very simple. It's gsutil space cp. So gsutil is a command line that allows you to interact with cloud storage. This is, a, this is created by Python and definitely it's been created in collaboration with Google because it has uh, GS in uh, Google storage uh, in, in the name. So gsutil space cp. cp is the command to copy. And then we just paste and press control V to paste. And then where do you want to copy it? I want to copy it in the current directory. So it's dot and backslash and enter. And that's pretty much it. It's copied this file so if you give ls you can see the happy cat.jpg has been copied here so that's uh, easy peasy isn't it all right so quick bit of cleanup i'm going to close this vm come out of the shell prompt i just want to also delete this bucket first so i can click on this bucket and just click on delete so you need to confirm delete here it will delete all the files, all the folders inside this. And then I also want to go back to my compute engine. And I also want to delete this instance. So let me wait for these operations to be completed or it doesn't really matter. You don't actually need to wait as well. Uh, I like to wait just to make sure it's deleted properly before shutting the project down. But you can also simply go into the project settings and then you can just shut on the project give the project name and shut out.